morning, everyone. It's good to have you with us as we come together to worship the Lord our God on this Easter Sunday morning. As far as announcements go, I don't really have any activities going on this week, but uh, we are glad to have you here. This is our hat day also. I see some nice, beautiful hats out there this morning, and uh, they all look good. Also, uh, as far as our uh, prayer list goes, we want to continue to remember uh, Mike Lorman's mother, Erica. She's... uh, still in the hospital, I think, or she's been doing, not doing too well, so continue to remember her as a new name on our prayer list. Also, we have a, a birthday today. Sandy's having a birthday today, so uh, she got another year younger, so we want to remember her. We had her birthday mixed up, we've got it corrected now. So. <laughs> oh, she's having two birthdays, okay, so that way she can catch up with Lee having two birthdays, right? No. <laughs> so happy birthday to Sandy as well. I think that's all the announcements I have. Also, the, there's a as we left this morning from the sunrise service, there was a little lady had fallen in the road down by the where the entrance to the trailer park, and she was skin up and she really confused. So Jerry and I went down, and also another couple come out that lived right there and uh, got her some help. So pray for her. I think she said her name was Marge, if that's right. You remember the yeah Marge. Robinson. So remember, huh? Marge Robinson. Robinson. Okay, Robinson. So we don't know who she was. Christopher shaking his head. He's heard of her before. But she was very confused. I don't know if she has a little bit of uh, Alzheimer's maybe or something. But she was cut real bad, bleeding some from her hands and so on. So remember her. No coat. Oh, yeah, no coat. All she had on was a T-shirt and some thin pants and a pair of sandals. And it was 33 degrees out there this morning. So uh, remember her. She We get, did get in touch with her daughter. So hopefully they got everything okay. So, But that's all the other prayer announcements I have. Y'all have anything else or need more comments on these things? Well, if not, we'll start our service this morning in our, as we look to our Lord God in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, again, we do thank you so much that you've assembled us together here this morning to come and to worship you. We ask now that you be with us as we come and worship and celebrate the rising of your Son from the dead. Father, we thank you so much that he has defeated death that he has brought us salvation through the shedding of his blood and given us hope also. And now be with us as we come together to worship you. We thank you for prayer, O God, that we can come before your throne and pour our hearts out before you. We ask now that you be with us together as we pray the prayer together that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Put your feet 
you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10, it's Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. The answer to your biggest question is what we're going to talk about this morning. And that biggest question, I will let you know here in just a moment. But first, let's hear what the Word of God has to say to us. In Matthew 28, chapter, uh, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. In the end of the Sabbath, and it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary of Magdalene and the other Mary to see the grave. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know what you seek, Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And so quickly and they tell so quickly and they tell his disciples that he was risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the grave, and fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and held him by the feet, and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell thy brethren that they go into the Galilee, and shall see me there. Thanks be reading to God's Word. That had to be a dramatic time for Mary and Mary. The shock, because they just was at the grave and they saw Jesus there. Now Matthew tells us that Mary and Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb to see Jesus. The Sabbath day of rest is over, and the dawn of the Sunday morning, so they, it's the first day of the week for them. The Sabbath day was for them was on Saturday, so they could not do anything, and they went to put spices on the body. So the women had watched Jesus die on the cross. They seen what an awful mess he was. They saw that there's no way that Jesus could come off that cross being alive. So they expected to see nothing in the tomb containing a corpse. That's what they expected to see. Jesus lying in there, wrapped in the clothing that they saw him put, be put in. But seeing nothing there had to be a shock to them. And after all, you know, no one had solved death back then. They haven't done it today, have they? With all the technology we have today, we just cannot bring people back to life. The biggest question is still, in our minds, your mind and my mind, what happens after death? We want to know that. We want to know what happens when we leave this world. It goes on to say, But suddenly there was that great earthquake, and an angel of the Lord descends upon heaven and rolls back the stone and sits on it. Now that would be kind of funny to see in the background if you was kind of watching that. The guards, big strong guards there, they had guarding the tomb. And here comes an angel just flying out, and a big earthquake shakes, the tomb rolls out, and the angel just sits on it like, ha-ha. And they shook like they were dead. You ever been that scared? You ever been so scared that you just kind of froze and kind of shake and didn't know what to say or, or rambled? I scare Ed a lot. I get hit a lot. But it's fun, though, isn't it? But when we get scared, it's not so fun, I know. But it's still, those men saw something. They saw God came down. He sent his angel down, and they're probably thinking, well, nobody's going to come and steal this body out of here because we are big soldiers. We're going to hold on to this body. They probably laughed at these guards. Then the angel then anticipates that what the women are wondering. The angel's thinking, I know what you're wondering. He gives them an answer to their question, which was a big one. Where is Jesus is what they want to know, right? They want to know, where is Jesus? 
We search for Jesus all the time, don't we? In our sunrise service this morning, we talk about in search of Jesus. That is why we come. And this may be your question as, as well, especially after a loved one has passed away, uh, you know, where a wife has maybe prolonged some uh, painful illness of cancer, and maybe a husband has died with a shocking of a heart attack, or where a brother was maybe killed in a drunk driver, or a sister died unexpectedly uh, on an operating table, and just like the teenagers at Combine High School, like the uh, Sandy Hook Elementary, just like in the Navy Yard, just like overseas we heard about in Kenya, we, we, we wonder, you know, what what is going on here and, and why does these things happen? And we want to know where they go. We want to know where they go when something happens like that. And how can we know this? Where are the, all those that have been laid in the tomb? Is a question that I've heard from many people and wonder about it myself. Where are our loved ones at? Just like when Mary and Mary was seeking for Jesus, wanting to know where is Jesus? We have the same question about our loved ones. And it says, the angel told us, Do not be afraid, says the angels to the women. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. In verse 5 and 6, they tell him, the angels tell him, says, He's not here. Why are you looking here? He told you this is what's going to happen. Their belief was a little bit low, wasn't it? Even though Jesus walked with them for three years and telling them about this event's going to happen, they really wasn't sure that this was going to happen because why? They seen Jesus on the cross, his body, lifeless body to them. And when we see our loved ones like that, we see the body there, but we know that the Spirit lives on with Christ. The Spirit is risen just like Jesus has been risen. The angel provides the answer to our biggest question, the death question. Following the loss of loved ones, he tells us that we are not to be trapped in graves, that we are risen. We are no longer trapped in the tomb, that our bodies might be there and gone to dust, but we are not there. Just like Jesus wasn't there in the tomb for Mary and Mary, He wasn't there. He was already risen. Our loved ones is already risen. What did Jesus tell the thief on the cross? The thief on the cross, he said, today you will be in paradise with me. Not tomorrow, not when I come back in thousands of years or whenever we're expecting Jesus to come back, which we, nobody knows. But he's saying, right now, at this moment, you will be in paradise with me. So they were searching for Jesus. On Easter morning, we discovered that the solution to death is not found in new technology. Instead, it is discovered in the empty tomb. Death wears your sting. Yes, it pierces our heart to lose a loved one that we can no longer can sit down and talk with and, and converse with. Yes, it does. It pierces our hearts. But we have what Jesus is telling us here. And His resurrection is that they are with me. It's the resurrection solution. He's with me. He's being taken care of. Jesus knew that his death and resurrection was coming is why he told his followers that he would be mocked, flogged, crucified, and on the third day he'd be raised. He told us in Matthew 20, 19. I'm going to be mocked, he said. And I'm going to be flogged. And then I'm going to be crucified. But they didn't want to hear this. They was in denial because they were thinking Jesus was going to come as a king with a sword and strike that way. Or maybe call his angels from heaven down to wipe out the earth. And sometimes we don't listen to some of our loved ones sometimes when they tell us things is going to happen. We, I know we, we can't even talk to our daughters or anything like that about, you know, that might it's going to happen to us later on in years. You know, we're, we're getting older and older and, uh, we probably won't live to be 124 years old, 
uh, like uh, we've seen this one woman, I think she's 114 now, more than 1800s. Probably won't see that. But you know, if we do, that's be a blessing from God. God has us a lot of work to do here. But it's hard to talk about that. It's hard to get ourselves together to plan our own funeral. Ed and I was talking about that, and she's put it off now for like seven years. We're going to get around to it one day. You know, although we'll be planning things, we've got to do it. It's hard to do that, to plan for your own funeral. But you know, we're just planning a place to put our body. What we've really planned all these years is being with Christ. Our spirit is going to be in heaven. Now, we wouldn't want to take our bodies with us to heaven, would we? We want to take and get our new bodies. We want to have our new sight. We want to see everything that we... That we're going to have the perfect bodies in. So why would we take it? We're going to shed just like the butterfly, and we're going to be beautiful as a butterfly in heaven. And then to, to demonstrate that the resurrection is not just a wishful thinking, the angel invites the women to come in and see the place where Jesus lay, the empty tomb. See, he's not there. See, they hadn't gone into the tomb yet, and the angel said, no, verse says, come on in. I want to show you that he is not here. So he took them inside, let them look around. But this is not a complete answer to the question, was it? Where's Jesus? Because they would think, after all, somebody could have moved that body. Y'all could play a trick on us to mock us as we as followers of Jesus. Maybe y'all moved it to say that he did this and make a laugh or mockery and bring him back in. They could be thinking that. But this would not satisfy by simply discovering that a loved one's body is no longer in his or her grave. That wouldn't satisfy us, would it? What would we think if we went to the grave site and it was no longer there? We would think, the first thing, someone moved it. And that's what they were thinking. Emptiness can only tell us so much. It does not complete the answer of the death question. Yes, they saw the empty tomb. They seen the body, but they still had this question. Where is Jesus then? If he's risen, it's, it kind of leaves it incomplete, doesn't it? Much more important is this question. Where is he now? That would be the question that they would answer, to ask the angel. Right then, said, okay, he's not here. Where is he? Where is Jesus? And to answer that question, the angel says to the women, this right here, Go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, as in verse 7. The angel tells him, says, okay, he's in Galilee. Now, I don't know about you and me, but if we was there at that tomb, and that angel was telling us that he's going to meet me in Galilee, but we've seen him on the cross. We've seen him put in this tomb. And I was thinking that he was going to heaven to his father. But he went to Galilee? I'd be like say, well, he went down there and uh, he, no, he's not raised here today. He's in Union. Y'all go to Union and you can see Jesus. We're going to think, well, did he have a, a, a just a recovery? Did, did he get better? Did it take him there to get him healed up and... All kinds of things had to be going through their mind. Jesus is going ahead of us. And He's always ahead of us. Jesus is in heaven waiting on us. He's one step ahead of us always because He knows our thoughts and our ways. He's ahead of us and so are our loved ones are ahead of us. They're in heaven. The ones that's left this world, they're in heaven. They're up there with Jesus, which went ahead of them. And He made the way for our loved ones to be in heaven. The resurrection is a solution to death because it moves all of us. Dead and alive, it moves us. 
and to the future that God has prepared for us. He told us He is preparing this for us. In the book of Isaiah that we read this morning, it talks about us and animals and being in heaven content, no tears, no nothing there. He talks about this in Isaiah thousands, thousands of years before Christ came. But now that Jesus has come and the resurrection's there, there's, He's not in the tomb. Well, they still had questions here, Mary did. And... He said, go. Go tell the others that Jesus is in Galilee. The women believe that the, what the angel says, so they leave the tomb with fear and great joy. They run to tell the disciples and suddenly something happens. They believe and they had so much joy, but yet they were scared to death. Now wouldn't we be scared? There's this angel with bright, brightness of him sitting there. Now, what's amazing about this story too, remember what you said about the guards? They were so scared. They were so scared to death. But the women folks wasn't. They were, had fear, but they was not scared to death like the other. They wasn't scared that they didn't move. The Holy Spirit moved them. Well, they run to tell the disciples, and something great happens. Just as the angel predicted, he's ahead of them. Jesus greets them, and they worship him. They turn and to run to tell the disciples, and boom, there's Jesus. Yeah, he's going to be in Galilee. But he was ahead of them before they started to run. They worship Him. And He says to them in verse 8 through 10, He says, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see Me. That is so wonderful because He's telling Mary and Mary, they get to meet Jesus before the disciples do. Jesus is not going to say, I'm going to go with you, Mary and Mary. We're going to go there. We're going to show these disciples. No, he's going to Galilee. Let them come to me. You go give my word to them that you saw me. He sends them on a mission into the future that God has in store for them. He sent them on a mission to talk about he is alive. Now, so often when a loved one passes on, we focus on the past. We remember the good times, the struggles with regrets, maybe, or we wish that we could have done things better, or situations differently. We think about these things. But with the resurrection solution, the focus is always forward, always toward everlasting life. So when a loved one passes away, Jesus encourages us to focus on the future, not the past. Focus on the future that one day we're going to be called up into heaven with them. One day we're going to be there with Jesus. One day we're not going to have this body that we have now. We're not going to have to worry about light bills. We won't have to worry about food. We won't have to worry about anything but worshiping God. And believe me, you're not going to be bored. You're going to say, gosh, i got to go to church every day when I get to heaven? <laughs> no, because heaven is church. Everything is God in heaven. God's got everything there for you to enjoy in life that worships Him. He's not going to put anything in heaven that's going to take away from Him. And you're going to say, well, okay, I hope I don't get sick in this church. Ah, no sickness. See? Vacations year-round. What a wonderful time it's going to be with Christ. That we won't have to worry. We won't have to worry about one thing, even our loved ones, because God is taking care of that. With a resurrection solution, the focus is always forward. Jesus encourages us to focus on the future. Now, the resurrection gives us a better future, both in this life and the next. First, it promises us that Jesus will meet us in the mission of the church. And we will follow 
His guidelines to work in this world. So we're working in this world, and we have the promises that Jesus gives us. Now, we talk about meeting Jesus. We talked about it this morning. We come to a sunrise service talking about who do we seek? Are we seeking Jesus here? He is risen. But you know, you run into Jesus a lot while we live, while we hear, and we miss it. Just three chapters earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said this right here. Come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. That's in chapter 25, verses 34 and 36. Do you see what happened just there, as I just read? The resurrection Jesus is promising to meet us, not on the road to Galilee, but in the lives of needy people. When we care for the least of the brothers and sisters of Jesus, we are caring for Him. Caught and I've seen Jesus this morning. We help a needy lady that needed our help. And we talked about that this morning. So the message in God's Spirit fills us. And we see. We see what Jesus is talking about firsthand. He gave us an example this morning. How we care for the least of our brothers and sisters. Jesus says we are caring for Him. Jesus meets us in this world whenever the following we follow his guidelines and do his work. I reminded that our own lives are actually improved when we look beyond ourselves and tend to the needs of others. We don't even think about our lives when we're helping someone else, do we? You hear about a lot of times when someone goes and rescues someone that's hurt in a wreck, maybe they're risking their own lives. They're not thinking about that. They're thinking about the other person. They're thinking about helping. And each one of you have those stories that you can tell me even. How you've helped and how you've done and maybe made a difference in somebody's life and you realize that you or self are caring for Him but through Jesus. Jesus, we are caring for Him when we do those things. So the next time you're doing it, and you're probably not even thinking about what you're doing, you just do it automatically. And that's a part of God inside of you. Just think, when you're doing it, you're seeing Jesus. You're meeting Jesus, not in Galilee, but right there and then. That's not all. The resurrection also gives us a future in Christ's heavenly kingdom. When Jesus encounters the woman on the road, he demonstrates that life does not end at the tomb, but it continues with a new life of joy, clarity, and restored relationship. And you probably, if you read some on the big screen here, you've probably seen some of that clarity and relationship building on the cross from the scriptures. And the joy. He greets them joyfully, tells them not to be afraid. He greets us joyfully. Don't be afraid. When our time comes, when we leave this world, don't be afraid because I will be there for you. There's no darkness in heaven. When, our, when we close, and I really believe this right here, I can't tell you from my own experience because I, I haven't died and come back on Jesus Christ has done that. But I really believe through the Scriptures right here, when I close my eyes and I take my last breath here on this earth, I'm not going to see darkness. You know how we go to sleep? We go to sleep, we see darkness, right? But we take that final sleep. That's when Jesus sends His angels, bright with glory, just like on the tomb, bright, so bright that it would be blinding, that you would never be in the light, taking that transformation from this earth to heaven, you will be in light the whole time. 
what a wonderful God we have. Because he says, there's no darkness in heaven. When you close your eyes and take your breath and go to there, you are going to heaven in light. They are carrying you up to Jesus' arms. You say, well, I might have to wait a big long line to see Jesus, no, you don't. Uh, God's everywhere in heaven. His embracement. Well, you're going to have to stand there in line because you've got to judge me. Guess what? <laughs> you say, well, I turned this bad, that bad. When I get up to heaven, God's going to have a book open up that says, this is what you've done. And guess what? When he opens that book up, it's going to be blank pages. Okay, my son, on the cross, we don't remember the past. It's wiped. It's clean. You've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Come on in. And that's what God is telling us. Through His Son, through the resurrection, through Mary and Mary. He promised to meet the disciples there and restore the relationship that had been broken. Remember, they scattered, didn't they? Yes, Jesus will fight to the death for you, but they scattered. And Jesus did not want them to feel because they left Him at the cross, because they didn't fight, they feel so bad and guilt that they did not try to stand up for their friend Jesus the Messiah, and Jesus wanted to let them know, it's okay. I want us to have that relationship that's broken, healed back. He wants our relationship to Him healed back. The words of Jesus set the stage for heaven, a place of joy, clarity, and restored relationships. In heaven's our tears, our tears will be replaced with laughter. Isn't it wonderful to hear children laugh and play? I've heard a lot of it this, this week with Lydia's birthday party and different children playing out and gathering eggs and stuff, you know, and, and the laughter. Isn't it just wonderful to hear a child laugh? Their spirit is so overjoyed, it just makes you smile, doesn't it? It makes you laugh. Our confusion will be clarified. Our shadow relationships will be healed by forgiveness. That's the future. It is not just a little better. It's a lot better, isn't it? Easter is a day of the big questions and even bigger answers. Where is Jesus? Where is He now? What is the future going to look like? We have those big questions. The experiences of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary teach us that the dead will not be trapped in tombs, but instead they will be raised. Through the resurrection of Jesus, we are given a promise of a marvelous future, both in this lifetime and the next that we live forever. He is the answer to our biggest questions. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your words you've given us today. May your spirit be with each one of us as we just glorify your beautiful name and the things that you've given us to do. We're thankful, Father, and we humble ourselves before you. We are joyful today, Father, for a wonderful Savior that has risen. May we, Father, Give all glory and thanks to you in Jesus' name. Amen.